I want to welcome everybody. Uh, this is the ninth national gathering for the Campaign for the Future of Higher Education. I won't go on at length because we have a very distinguished speaker, but the Campaign for the Future of Higher Education was formed by faculty and staff in California in January of 2011, where some folks from the California Faculty Association, the PSC, CUNY, UUP, we got together and we tried to find out how we could think of having the voice of the faculty and staff have a place in the discussion about higher education, especially given the attacks we have all faced over the past five or six years. Hello everyone, welcome to Pennsylvania, welcome to Philadelphia. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Secretary Hanger is here visiting with us today. Uh, you know, I first got to know him more uh, when he was actually running for governor in Pennsylvania. Uh, as soon as uh, uh, Secretary Henry left that campaign. I know he joined very quickly on to uh, Tom Wolf's gubernatorial campaign and joined him as a policy advisor. And then uh, Governor Wolf quickly made him his policy secretary. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce Secretary Henry. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ken. I appreciate uh, the introduction and. Uh, I want to welcome also uh, all those of you who've traveled to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, in the governor's race uh, for the first time since uh, governors could be re-elected. Uh, the, the voters of Pennsylvania decided not to re-elect uh, the incumbent, uh, Tom Corbett, and to, uh, to elect uh, Tom Wolf, who is now, now the governor. Why did the voters throw out an incumbent Republican governor, or any incumbent governor, something they had never done, and it, come, it really came down to one word, education. The reason Governor Wolf uh, is governor today is that um, many Pennsylvanians understood not only was he pro-education and Corbett was anti-education, but he, he under, they understood that he was actually pro-worker. And he, he is making the case that we, we progressives and, and I'll say Democrats uh, have to make much better. That being fair is not only the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do. And if we're going to grow our economy at a faster rate, actually we need less inequality. We need to actually be investing in people, particularly in the bottom third of the economy, the bottom half of the economy. We've got to a point in this country where inequality is hurting just about every American outside of the billionaire class. I mean, that's really where we're at. And I don't think we Democrats are good enough at explaining that fair isn't just about being good or fair. Fair is about growing the economy faster. We, we have an opportunity now to really make the case that if you want a faster growing economy, you want a better economy, we, we, one of the essential things to do is get fairer throughout this economy. Raise the minimum wage. Deal with student loan debt. Uh, and, and invest in workers and training and other things. Uh, sh uh, shrink the in income inequality. So where do unions fit in all of that? Well, very frankly, I don't think we can be fair, we can't uh, shrink in income inequality if unions continue to decline. Uh, so unions really matter. And uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, the Wolf administration understands that. You also understand how critical and important growing unions are to making our economy work better and to be more efficient and to grow faster. It's the opposite of what the right-wing message is about unions. That's the truth. The right-wing message is unions hurt jobs creation, slow down job growth. It's at, and in fact, it's the opposite. Unions, because they help to make sure the paycheck is fair, that, that workers are, are protected in the workplace, uh, and don't get the short end of the stick, uh, contribute to making our economy <coughs> grow faster. And we desperately need not less unions, but we desperately need more unions and right now. Well, that, that brings us to education. The last thing I'll talk about, I was warned I'm standing between you and dinner, so cut this, <laughs> keep this pretty short from here on anyway. Um, so, 
Governor Wolf is absolutely dedicated uh, to reinvesting in education, uh, from early childhood education up through uh, K through 12 and all the way through higher education. Uh, the governor is clear that, there, that we must, in fact, invest in education at every level. He's also clear about what's going on uh, with the attempt to, frankly, privatize public education. And in, in a fundamental sense, for those who want to privatize, any dollar taken away from a public school, for whatever reason, isn't a wasted dollar. Think about that. We're dealing with a very serious effort to privatize public education, whether it is at the higher ed level or K through 12 level. Some of those folks who are doing that are actually bold enough to honestly state it now. So uh, there are so many problems here, uh, and we have to come to grips with what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a very significant effort, not only to, frankly, cripple at unions, but also to privatize public education. Now, the governor is, uh, I think, uh, going to fight hard, uh, and I'm delighted to hear that uh, others of you who are also fighting hard, uh, we have no time to lose, no time to lose at, the, at this juncture in our history. Uh, obviously, every election is important. Uh, we'll see what the Pennsylvania voters do in 2016 on the national stage, uh, as well as here in our state house races. Uh, making the public case and educating people and trying to get more, more young people in particular to, to in fact engage and vote is critical. There's an enormous partisan difference based upon age at this point. Those over 65 are disproportionately voting Republican. Those under 40 are disproportionately voting Democratic. The problem is voter turnout in those, in those areas. You all are at really right at the right place and the right time to address so many of the issues that I think are critical. So on behalf of Governor Wolf, thank you for coming to Pennsylvania, and more importantly, thank you for working so hard for a much better higher education system here in Pennsylvania and around the country. Thank you very much.